Well, the suspect in the 2015 disappearance of Crystal Rogers made his first appearance in court today and pled not guilty. Brooks Hauk, who appeared virtually from jail, is being held on, listen to this, $10 million bond. His attorneys asked for a reduction, not surprisingly, claiming the amount is excessive and punitive. They suggested $500,000 bond and a GPS monitor. Uh, that would be enough to ensure Hauk's return to court. But prosecutors say Hauk is a multimillionaire with vast resources. The judge will rule on that request at a later date. Prosecutors also dropped this bombshell in court, saying they have the gun they believe was used to kill Tommy Ballard, and that is Crystal Rogers' father, and that happened the year after Rogers went missing. They say they purchased it from Brooks Hauk's brother, Nick. Now, Nick was a former police chief who was using a fake name. Nick Hauk was fired from the Bardstown Police Department for interfering in the Rogers case. Here's a portion of today's hearing. Certainly, one of the things the court is, is concerned about in this case is, is obviously a bond that's reasonable to assure his appearance, but also the safety of any witnesses. Is the Commonwealth wanting to go anywhere with any other investigations that are going on in regard to this matter? Yes, we are. Um, I will tell you, Ron, we're investigating the murder of Tommy Ballard that could potentially be related to this case. The, we were waiting for testing to come back on the farm we believe was used to murder Tommy Ballard, a farm that we purchased from Nicholas Howe, who was using a fake name when he sold the rifle. We know it's the same calendar. There's five criteria that the they're looking at, and so far it's matched four of the five criteria. And then we would ask if your honor does grant the bond, and I'll provide a list of witnesses to the court as well as to the defense counsel, but we would ask for GPS monitoring. We would ask for no contact with the Ballard family, and we would ask for no contact by the Hout family. I'm not talking about defense counsel or any investigators I have of any witness in this matter. All right, thank you. Thank you, I'll give you one last opportunity here. I promise I'm going to ask the tape on my Start with the, well, I guess the easiest things, but I, I do not object to a no contact order between Mr. Halk and the Howard family. That's standard, that's, a, that's appropriate. Uh, I'm sure neither side wants to have contact. All right, still with us, trial attorney Rich Schoenstein. Rich, you know, this is an interesting one because, again, a $10 million bond sounds like a lot. When I looked through uh, the criteria for bond there, it's danger to the community, uh, flight risk. It doesn't also say anything about the amount of money the person has, right? There's a number of factors. I don't know if that should or should not be considered. Certainly, you want it to be enough to give incentive for this person to come back. Um, and $10 million is a lot. What I thought was very effective by the defense, they named a number of cases, similar type crimes, mm -hmm. where the most bail asked for by the court in counties all around and in Bardstown was three million. This is three times that. Your thoughts on their arguments? Yeah, it, it's a very interesting question, Michael, and you're exactly right. What are the two things you look at in a bond determination? You look, is, the, is there a safety risk and is there a flight risk? So now this safety risk comes up because we have this bombshell of the death of the father that may be linked. And so there's an implication that there could be some sort of safety list uh, risk if this person is out free and can contact the family and there's a problem there and there's a flight risk because of resources. I don't know if one of the possibilities is just to say no bond. I mean, at some point you make the number so astronomically high, you might as well just say you're not permitting bond. Yeah, and so I would agree with you, but we all know you can't, there's some cases in which you're not allowed to say no bond right, as a judge. you have a constitutional right Exactly, yeah. you have a constitutional right for bond, and so mm -hmm. 10 million, though, I would agree is a little excessive, mm -hmm. but he does have a lot of resources, allegedly. All right, stay with us. When we come back, more draw-dropping details from Brooks Houck's bond hearing, this time allegations about how his family behaved during the grand jury proceedings. Stay tuned. 
Tonight on Closing Arguments, the discovery of Suzanne Morphew's remains and how it may relate to another missing woman, the 2016 disappearance of Crystal Reisinger. We'll bring you the latest developments as we dive deeper. Plus, a Florida father stands trial for allegedly locking his adopted son in a box for hours at a time. We'll take a closer look at the disturbing circumstances as testimony continues. Closing Arguments with Vinny Politan, tonight at 8, 7 central, only on Court TV. The suspect in the 2015 disappearance of Crystal Rogers pled not guilty today at a bond hearing that revealed new details in this case. The judge is taking time to review Brooks Houck's request for a reduction in his $10 million bond. His attorneys have asked for it to be reduced to $500,000 and say he will also agree to wear an ankle monitor. But prosecutors also dropped a few bombshells today saying they believe they have the gun used to kill Rogers' father, Tommy Ballard. Now, he was shot by a sniper the year after his daughter went missing in 2015. Prosecutors are also accusing Houck's family of recording jurors during the grand jury proceedings. Now, here's a portion uh, that talks about that during today's hearing. The Commonwealth is asking this court to consider the defendant and his family's behavior during the grand jury proceedings in this matter. The defendant speaks in his motion about his love and support of his family. I completely agree. They've been supportive. This court and defense counsel are well, well, are well aware of the sanctity of grand jury proceedings. It's so important the Kentucky Supreme Court gave it its own rule. Grand jury proceedings are secret. In this matter, the defendant's sister, Rhonda McElvoy Houck, brother, Nicholas Houck, mother, Rosemary Houck, brother-in-law, Alex McElvoy, and Rosemary Houck's live-in boyfriend, Larry Mott, all recorded, secretly brought in recorders and recorded the grand jury. I've been practicing here, Your Honor, for 25 years in this state, and I have yet ever heard of anyone recording a grand jury. I've got copies of the grand jury proceedings <coughs> as it relates to the one Mr. Hout is involved in. And I will tell Your Honor, then I also have a transcript, which I'll provide to Mr. Butler. I will tell you this is an in-house transcript. I'm not asking Your Honor to rely on the transcript. The reason why I'm tendering it is because it has times on it of relevant conversations on it. These are conversations that occur between, may I approach? There's times on it noted. It'll need to be still because it does contain the grand jury proceeding. The, the total time of the tape is nearly five hours. The first two hours of it is interaction between Mr. Brooks Hout and his sister, where they talk about Brooks Hout shows her how to run the recorder, tells her he wants a tape of it. The question is why? This was in July. Ms. Hout, Rosemary Hout, as well as Nicholas Hout, testified on July 15th, the same month of the murder of Crystal Hout. The sister was in 2016. The question is why? I think everyone in this courtroom knows why. To make sure everyone's story is consistent. As been stated before, the truth will set you free. The problem in this matter is the truth will imprison Brooks Howe. 
discuss trial attorney Rich Schoenstein. And Rich, Michael and I have been talking about how have they been taping it, what have they been taping, but I think that just made clear that they are literally taping when they are testifying to the grand jury, all secret, and that's what they tape so they can see that the statements are consistent, or rather, the defendant allegedly has had this done so he can do that. And I agree, I mean, grand jury, it is secret for a reason. This is a huge issue. Absolutely. A very big issue. You know, you can't mess around with grand jury or jury proceedings at all. And to go in there with a tape recorder as suspect, if these people really did it, uh, I suspect they'll be prosecuted for that. And if the defendant arranged it, it's going to be an issue in his prosecution, and it should be. And I'll tell you what, Rich, if in fact those transcripts are what they say they are, I don't think he's getting bail. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, yeah. I think the whole bail well, argument right. goes out the window. It all plays into this issue of safety. This is somebody who's trying to maybe align the evidence, mess with the evidence, potentially intimidate witnesses or jury members. You know, it, it definitely goes to the question of whether or not he should have bail. Yeah, I don't think it's coincidental, Michael, that mm -hmm. at the same time they're saying reduce this bail to 500000 which clearly from what we understand of his assets, he'd be able to make, sure. make bond at that point, that the state says, and by the way, Judge, we've got an issue with these grand jury proceedings because that will give it a judge incentive to say, no, you don't. You're trying to mess with the system from inside. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let you out. Um, compare this to the Murdoch case because we were talking about about the similarities. It's a family in a smaller community with a lot of wealth and assets and allegations at least of being involved in murder. Yeah, well, I think, I think Judge, you just made the comparative points that he's, he's well-financed, he's well-known in the community. That can present some difficulties in getting a jury that can decide it fair and impartially or could believe he would do something like this. Um, so, you know, it doesn't seem to be sort of as gruesome and out of the blue as the Murdoch murders. Uh, and I don't know if it has as extensive a backstory as Murdoch does, but there are definitely some comparable factors. I think as this trial comes about, we're going to find out a lot more because there have been allegations about them messing around with the system throughout this case. And Brooks Howe can, you know, in his involvement and his connections, mm -hmm. his brother Nick was fired for messing around with the investigation. So I yep. think there's a lot to be learned as and, we move forward. And now a gun allegedly connecting mm -hmm. two different murders.